engineers and car mechanics don't always get along. And the reason for that is sometimes their designs are not very 10 years later friendly for us. But in today's video, I want to show you when car engineers and car owners don't get along. Don't get me wrong. I have nothing against car engineers. They're hardworking folks, do things that I'll never be able to do. But sometimes they do things that make you wonder. This is a casing point of that. If you're not familiar with what this is, this is an HVAC unit of a Lexus RX350. This is where all the magic happens. Here's your blower motor. This is where the air comes out. Here's the frost. Here are the different vents. This is where your heater core is. This is where your evaporator is. This is the whole nine yards, just the whole thing. And this car, 2010 Lexus RX350, beautiful car, low miles, nothing really out of the ordinary, comes in with a concern where there's no defrost. No matter what you do, there's no airflow out of the frost. So initially, we started looking at this. Usually, in most Toyota Lexus models, there's something called a servo motor. Let me show you this one. This is a servo motor. And this servo motor actuates this little gear that moves and changes the direction of flow. This particular one controls the temperature, it's called air mix. So on the driver's side, because it's a dual zone unit, on the driver's side, this changes the temperature of the driver's side. You put it on hot, this will turn, it will take the airflow away from the heater core into the evaporator, which is on the other side we get cold. If you want to mix them half and half, it'll open the door halfway. If you want it just hot, it'll switch and do that. Very simple operation. This one is right next to your foot as a driver. You peel the carpet back, screws, comes out, you replace it, life's good. But this one controls the temperature on the drivers, not the airflow. Would you come around this way and Take a look here. Where do you think the one that controls the airflow is? I'll just let you look around. Jose, let's show them a back shot as well from the back so they can maybe take a guess as you look at this. Yeah, I don't see it. Neither do you. Yes, because the 2010 to 2000. 15 RX350 has one of the strangest AC boxes. They don't have much access. You only can replace this one. And let's kind of stand this unit on its side for you to see the bottom part. They decided, in their infinite wisdom, to combine these two in one unit. You see how these two servos, there's one here and one here, they're combined into one unit for reasons beyond me why that is the case. See, there is another one right here, which is also very difficult to get to. If we look right here, this one, all it does is control this little door, which makes fresh air. So right now, it's in recirculate. The fresh air is supposed to come from here, but if you look through here right now, I wonder if you can see it. See, this one is partial, it's halfway. This is closed, and then when it opens, it lets fresh air in. Nothing really about it. Here's the problem with this car. One of these, which I believe is the top one, is out. And this, this bottom one is the temperature control for the passenger side. So. In order to do this, you, to replace this motor that just got weak over time, here's what you have to do to the car. Let me just show you. You basically have to turn it into the day it was born. I mean, if we could have just spent more than 10 minutes with this, we could have come up with a better design, I hope because this is extremely invasive. We basically have to tear down the entire car, get the HVAC unit out of the car, get the entire harness, the entire dash out of it, just to replace a little motor this big. 
And here's where the problems start. If we get to this level into this car, we are going to try to future-proof it because the owner of this car is spending a small fortune in labor because this is not a simple 15-minute job. This is more like a three-day job to get it done and done right. If you want to just put it in and everything rattles, nothing sits right, yeah, you can done, get it done quicker. But to do it right, you really got to spend the time here. And you got to make sure everything goes back exactly where, where it was supposed to be. So nothing would rattle, we don't have issues, and life is good. So here is what we opted out to do in this case. I told the owner, we could attempt to replace this motor alone. But here is the problem. We have no way of testing it outside the car. I can test the doors inside the unit to see if they're functioning, but I actually have no accurate way of testing it because all of these wires go to a computer, which is right here, that control it. I know it's not working, but the problem is I can't access it to test it. See, how we test those, and in case you run into this, these love to start clicking, click, 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 click. You'll just hear them clicking continuously. So here's how we test these. You pull the actuator out and then you move this door. For example, this is the common thing. I don't have heat on the driver's side, only cold. And you hear that clicking. That's the first thing you're gonna go to. Unplug this guy, this little door will, will be free once you get this guy out, because this has a lock. And then you turn on the car, you turn on your heat and move this. If you're able to switch from heat to cold, you know that all the doors inside are working properly. You only need the servo. And here's what usually happens with these. See, this is why this is not a two-wire servo, it's a three-wire servo. And this is very important, because if this has only two wires, the computer will spin it one way, it'll go, it'll flip the polarity, it'll spin it the other way. But the third wire is actually the position feedback. So the computer can know what is the position of this motor. And see, in Toyota Lexus cars, every time you start the car, it'll run a servo check. It'll actually move the servo a little bit back and forth just to establish the position. And now we know where it's at and it's running. What happens with these servos, the motor gets weak and it starts overheating. And then that overheating of that motor wipes out the position sensor. And now it doesn't know where this servo is on one position, on one extreme. So if you put it all cold, it'll stop clicking because it established the position. But when you put it to all hot, it goes and goes and goes, reaches the end of the travel here and then it starts clicking, hunting back and forth because it doesn't know what position it's in and it locks up. We've actually had a case where the HVAC controls would just lock out because it will not respond to your physical control until it does its servo check. When a certain amount of time passes and the servo check is incomplete, it just cancels it and then everything works. So when you have a clicking servo, First, find out which one it is. It's usually, you can put your hands on them and hear them, or you can actually see what function makes it stop clicking, and that's the one you're chasing after. Usually, you'll have the air mix. This is what controls your temperature. You have the mode, which tells you where, to, where the air is going, foot, defrost, phase, combination, and then you have the fresh, fresh air or recirculate servo. These are all the servos you have. If you have a dual climate control, you'll have two of these. If you have a single climate control, you'll have one, and that controls the air mix for both. Now, here is the conversation here. I have no way to test this. What do I tell this customer when we take this apart, change this extremely expensive servo, because it's two servos in one, put it back in the car and it still doesn't work? And I have no real way of testing these. These doors are so complicated. And the reason they're complicated is if it was the temperature one, temperature one is super simple to, to test because you only have one gear. You move it one way, it's full hot. You move it one way, it's full cold. There's one or zero. 
But in the case of this one, and I want you to see it, do you see this giant mechanism here? This controls all the doors inside of here at the same time. There's, I think, a total of three doors that it controls. Some of them you can't even see, and some of them are visible. Like if you look all the way up here into here, inside, you can see when I move this, there's that little door that it's moving. Here's the problem with this interesting design. You can't test these doors. You can try and we can put air and try to do this. But when you get to this level of disassembly, this becomes kind of a giant gamble and the gamble at the expense of the customer. We don't do that because I know the servo is out because it is clicking and it's not responding. But usually when these servos go out, I have all modes but defrost. I can put it on foot, I can put it on face, I, can't, I don't have defrost. This is where you have to use your best educated course of action from experience. These don't have a lot of issues, but there's something about cars and the defrost thing. I have reason to believe something fell in here, actually jammed the door, and that's what jammed the servo. It's difficult to show you because we had to send a camera in here and see it, but this door is locked. It's inside all the way inside. It's impossible to show you in camera. When, when, I, when I put my hand here and move it, it's, it's not the same as the other doors. The other is all the way down here. This door is binding on one side. So here is what, uh, what the outlook here. We have to, to future-proof this and we wouldn't have issues and we wouldn't be gambling with the customer because the biggest cost here is actually the labor. We recommended that we replace the entire unit, which comes with the servo and comes with the doors at a hefty cost of labor. I mean, if this servo was separate and it was a little bit more down or maybe facing down, come up with a better way, please. Think of these things for service. We would have been able to not even disassemble the car, just service the servo and we're done. Folks, the takeaway from this video and I'll, I'll share with you some of the costs, some of the precautions here. Be very careful with dropping things in the defrost vent and the vents. You do not know how fragile these doors are. They're not strong at all. You drop something in there and this servo is trying to move against it, you're gonna break a door. And disassembling this entire unit is not a simple task because they were not supposed to be disassembled. You can get the evaporator out of them, you can get these servos out, but that's about it. They don't actually give you individual doors and you can't do that. And plus, are you really going to experiment with something that takes this much to take out? No experiments, one or zero. This will be fixed 100% without doubts, without experimentations. And that's why we decided to replace the whole HVAC box. Not this section. This section, this is just a blower motor. This is the blower motor case. Here's your cabin filter. This is what you see when you pull that cabin filter behind the, the glove box. Very simple. We don't have issues with the ECU. We already did testing. This is an, an appointment that we scheduled a while back. We tested the door here. This one is visible. visible. You can actually see this door activating. You can test it. This one, both hinges are steady and we don't have issues. The problem is inside here. So here's where we're at with this car. We're going to replace the HVAC box, which at its massive cost, it only comes with a heater core. It doesn't come with the evaporator. I recommend it to the customer, if we're going to get to this point, put an evaporator, put a new one. Because if we do all this at this big cost, and then a year from now, the evaporator decides to spring a leak, we're doing this all over again. So we're actually putting an evaporator as well, and usually, when I do this, whenever we open the HVAC system, it is not a bad idea to renew your expansion valve right here. This is accessible outside the car. We got the system open. This thing is really inexpensive. We don't have a lot of issues, but we want to cover all our bases because I don't want folks to keep having issues with the same system over and over. We kind of want to go in, address it, 
not have issues with it anymore, and we're done. But if you own one of these cars and you are concerned, all I'm gonna tell you is, when you start hearing the clicking, investigate it. Find out which one, and main thing, don't drop things in the vents. That is very important. So 2013 all the way to 18 RAV4s, notorious for this because they have that vent on top of the dash. Be very careful, folks. We'd love to put a pen, put loose change there. That's usually change what breaks these. They'll fall in and you will find out once the hefty bill comes in, why that was not a good idea. Folks, this breaks my heart. I don't want folks spending a lot of money on things that could have been avoided, but this is not, unfortunately, the owner of this car, he bought it like this, and he was kind of stuck with it. Probably the previous owner, unfortunately, dropped something, and you'll never find it because it might have been something that came out at some point in one of the vents, but this is what we have going on with this car, but if you own one of these RXs, here is what lies behind the dash. It is a maze. It looks like this will never go back together the way it was. It will, folks. This is, we do this for a living. We pride ourselves in being professionals and you spend the time. Something about taking apart a dash or do, going into a car this level, you just gotta work in a system in a very organized fashion. You can't just go ripping stuff. You see bolts sitting here. There's a system called counting your bolts. And when you work with the same brand over and over and over, you get used to what the bolts are for. That's important. For example, airbag bolts will always have a big washer on them. Certain interior bolts, like I'll show you one for example. They will have a shorter or a shallower end at the tip. This is usually a trim bolt. You will, you will see things like that that will guide you where these bolts go. Every time you install a component, you stop and do your count. Okay, how many bolts do I have? And this is where mechanics develop a very good memory for this stuff. This is part of the job. You have to, Folks will look at this and be like, how do you remember where everything goes? It's part of the training of being in panic, that you remember how things are. This is where your full focus and attention is. You start counting, okay, we put this component, let me look at my bolts. I have these four bolts are for this component, these four bolts are for this, these two are for this. Wait, I have one extra bolt. That's when you stop. Let's figure out where that bolt goes. And sometimes it is something you forgot, something you missed, or something you didn't think about that is upcoming, but that's when you stop, because that's how you catch. You cannot put this car back together, end up with a bunch of bolts, or where do these go? Go to the garbage. Well, that's, how you're, that's your next rattle and squeak. That's the problem. You, these things are time consuming. You have to spend the time, and sometimes it is stressful, folks, because it, we're not gonna just put this car back together and not worry about it. I mean, you forget one of these connectors, you have warning lights, things don't work, now we're going back in to see what happened. So all this, because we cannot access that little servo that sits right here. You can't remove this box in the car, so we can't test anything. And when we're gonna get at this level, we wanna make sure we future-proof this so the customer wouldn't have any issues with this. Because some of these doors, they're really difficult to test without having the system actually working in the car. And at this point, there's not even a place to hit the start button. So how do we test it? That's the problem with stuff like this. And if you are curious, lastly, before we wrap up this video, here's the dashboard. Here's the back of it. Here's your passenger airbag. Here's how the vents actually work here. So this vent, this is the, the passenger side vent. And that's the driver's side vent. And here's actually your defrost vent see how it goes here and then if you follow this one this one actually goes right here this is your side window vent all the cars will have a side window and that's how you get the defrost pretty cool concept that's where the defrost is and here are your other two and then the floor ones if you're ever curious here they are this is actually removable in the car there's another one on the other side that got removed in this removal well, that's how this works. And then this one, the very bottom one, it's actually for the rear. That's how you, how you get that. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of our other videos. Until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.